Hi, this is Matt Gillen, and we're back here for part two of the weekly relapse, talking about uh, dog balls and chicken soup. There we go. Works out. My favorite one so far. You are listening to the weekly relapse with your host, Skylar Potter. The day is done. All right, so we're back with second part, number two. This is with, with Maddie, man. Uh, last time, because I can't ask you the same question to start off with. Oh, come on, let's let's do the same exact thing. You want to see if we can mimic Complete, it, like mirror the, it? Yeah, mirror the exact same thing. I'm here with one of here. my favorite people on the planet, yes. you guys. Uh, Matt, I, I'm going to call you I Maddie. I think you missed the line. Yes, Maddie. <laughs> that's, that's good. Um, so we talked about bands that you've been able to work with, you had the privilege to work with. I don't remember where we left off, so we're just going to kind of start this whole thing over. I want to know, because I was thinking about this after you left, if you, had, like, the, if you could choose like, an artist, or like, whether it's like a, like, a mus- like a musician, or like, whatever you want to do, you can choose like, one artist that you're going to go set up a show for, who would it be? Uh, Maybe like a top three. One's really fucking hard to choose. One, yeah, one's, I mean, there's, there's so many that I'd really like to work with. Um, uh, I would say I would, I, I've never, I've never worked with, uh, with Dave Grohl or the Foo Fighters. Oh, that would um, be, that would, would be amazing. I would really, you know, we were, we were talking in the first part about, uh, um, you know, being starstruck and stuff. If I, you know, and I was still, I was talking about, um, one of the first, ni- first time I met, uh, Keith Richards. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if the first time I met Dave, Dave Grohl, Dave I would, Grohl, I would bro. be like freaking out. There's, yeah, there's no way you can, yeah, like, I, that I guy would, has to walk in a room yeah. and the room freaks out. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a, he's a really cool guy and, uh, you know, um, not only him, but also his, his band. A lot of the guys yeah. in his band are, are, you know, Taylor Hawkins, his drummer, uh, is, is an awesome guy, really have, funny guy. Have you seen that video where Dave Grohl has that guy in the Kiss makeup come on stage? Yeah. And gives him the guitar. He's like, what's up, Kiss yeah. guy? What's up, Kiss guy? Yeah. Yeah, that was so amazing. And then, like, yeah. the, like he, the fact that he was blown away. He was blown away by this guy. Like, he couldn't right. even – he was, like, messing up the lyrics to uh-huh. his own song. He's like, fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Like, yeah. I, I – Whenever I asked that question, I was like, I I would choose like Eminem. Mm. Or oh yeah, like that, that that would be cool. That'd, That'd be amazing. Be really, I'd like to. Um, well, it, it's it, it's a sort of a, a kind of like a rap supergroup. But um, have you ever have you heard uh, uh, Prophets of Rage? I have. Um, you know uh, Chuck D mm-hmm. from Public Enemy. That'd be cool. And uh, and uh, be real from Cypress Hill. You work um, with them? Uh, no, I haven't. But uh, we were talking about people that we like to. Yeah, like that'd to be work amazing. With. Like, you know, they they did uh, as as prophets of rage. Um, they did a couple of uh, a couple of dates where they Dude. did it as, as the band and stuff. And that, that I haven't that heard the awesome. name Cypress Hill in so long. See, I, I, well, that, that's one of the things. I never worked with Chuck D, but I worked with I, I worked with Be Real. I've worked with Cypress Cypress Hill. I did a I did a tour back in I think it was it was the early two thousands. But yeah. yeah, I did I did like I did like an eleven eleven or fifteen date. Uh, tour uh, is a North American tour um, with with Cypress Hill. That's crazy. Yeah, and that was pretty fucking awesome. I mean, I've got I've got a video. De- I've got a demo of you know it's like a video of of uh, you know a lot of the shows that I've done and everything from from the perspective of you know some some of them that have been filmed and everything like that. I saw that the Nine Inch Nails one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, was it, amazing. Yeah, but, dude, uh, that looks so tight. It is that that uh, that set was that that it was, was so just, that was so great to it do. It was popping off. Yeah, like the the light work was mm-hmm. incredible. Oh yeah. Um, man, I, I've said this a, a million times. Every time I'm at work, because we listen to Rock 108, right? I, I so I hear a lot of Queen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dude, if I could go back in time no. and see any artist, any doesn't matter. Oh, dude, I would go see. To be able to see Queen, dude, that was yeah. That uh, would be 
just yeah. one of the greatest experiences of all time. Because, dude, you can't hear one of their songs come on the radio right. without yeah. getting in a better fucking mood. Yeah. Someone plays that shit on a jukebox uh-huh. at a bar, it's over. Yeah. Everyone's buying well, shots. Here's, here, here, here's some something interesting. Uh, back in the day, back before you or, or some of the, I, you know, I, I don't know what your, what your main group of listeners <laughs> is and everything, but in Amarillo, back in the, back in the uh, you know, mid 70s to mid 80s back whenever i was coming up you know uh, coming up through high school and everything like that i mean amarillo was a major tour stop and, and everything that's know? crazy we to used to come up here not now it is definitely not now and that's one of the things that that you know pissed me off you know i mean you know we could go into a whole rail of like a hour and a half of me talking about civil fucking politics and stuff but the, <laughs> but the thing is the thing is is that uh um uh, bands like, uh, you know, uh, Van Halen and Led Zeppelin, uh, the not not the original Black Sabbath, but the Ronnie James Dio version of Black Sabbath. Those bands, and then a lot of the '80s hair bands like Poison and Rat and uh, um, Motley Crue and stuff like that came through Amarillo and played at the Civic Center here. But one of them that did play here that my my sister's like three years older than me. And I wasn't allowed to go, and I wish I could go, but Queen came through here. Oh, my God. And it was dude. like on one of their last one of their last big tours and stuff, and Queen came through here, and my sister got to come, here, come up here and see Queen. And I was like, oh. But, yeah, yeah my sister got to see got to see Freddie Mercury live. And that would, Brian May, that would, all of them, you know. Just the name Freddie Mercury, bro. Oh, yeah. He but was, yeah, that's he, so fucking nuts. And uh, you know the 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 movie the movie's coming out pretty soon. Uh, um, called yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody. I want to see I that just, really I'm bad. I'm going to be like the you know, we always talk about the fanboys with the with the Avengers and with yeah. all the Marvel stuff and everything like that. You know, as, you better as be fanboy, wearing that outfit that I'll he be, wore. I'll be like in the you know, iconic. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll be like one of the fanboys. that's like first in line to go and see it and stuff. You know. Yeah, it's gonna be that's gonna be good, man. My mom, David Bowie. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's mm. the one that passed away, right? Oh, he, yeah, David he, Bowie died yeah. uh, just about a year ago, okay, yeah. a year and a half ago. Yeah, right, yeah cause I wanted to make sure, because I knew it was a celebrity that died, and I was pretty sure it was David Bowie. My mom yeah. uh, saw him live, right? They did all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, her and my real father. And, uh, like, he, I've heard I've heard both sides of the story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're, they're, they match up. But my dad's side of the story is basically they were in the lobby of this hotel, and Bowie was staying in the same hotel and got on the elevator. My mom books it, bro. Oh. Just leaves my dad. Just fucking oh. and jumps on, like, gets jumps on in. the elevator with him, dude. Nice. And, uh, like, they ended up, like, uh, she talked to him for a second, and then uh, they signed a poster uh-huh. you know what i mean and gave it to her yeah and like my mom uh my dad when he came down here a couple years back from illinois brought that poster with wow. him it was like penny this is yours you know what i mean like you you were the one that bum rushed david bowie not me and yeah. then my mom told me a story right after that about um i guess it was like her aunt was uh doing it's another elevator story that's how we got on it uh yeah. her aunt was doing something got on an elevator and uh she was super scared because there was three black dudes on there right and then uh <laughs> They went to add, like, they just kind of went to, like, are you okay? And, like, she freaked the fuck out. Like, ah, right. like, uh, uh, was, like yeah. you know. And uh, they ended up, like, calming her down and walking her to her room. Like, look, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Turned out that shit was Eddie Murphy, bro. Wow. Yeah. And, he, like, he sent, cool. he sent, like, a, 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 a rose, um, like, a dozen roses. Uh-huh. And around each one was, like, a $100 bill. And it was, like, thank you so much. I haven't laughed that hard in years or some shit like that. that you know what I mean? cool. It's just crazy. Like you never know, man. Like if you don't know, yeah. if you don't know who this person is, or if they haven't even, because he was making yeah. money then, you know what right. I mean? Like he was blowing up already. Yeah. She's just not in the comedy. She doesn't listen to comedy, you mm-hmm. know. So she had no idea who Eddie Murphy is. Yeah, there's a good chance. Like you, I've sat on like in the same room, or like if, mm-hmm. when I was in Austin, dude, mm-hmm. I may have been in the same restaurant next to a celebrity. I just had no fucking clue. Cause yeah, because I, I didn't know their. I don't know their art. Yeah, absolutely. that's crazy to think about. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I I don't know if you've ever heard me. Uh, uh, talk to I mean I've talked to you about this but I you know Brett always seems uh, your your wonderful girlfriend Brett always seems more interested in this is, is that I come from I come from a, a, a theater, theater theatrical family yeah she and well my, she's a huge yeah. theater like she, that's yeah. what she's doing right now I bet yeah. she, she's watching a musical right she was you know she was a big fan of my mother's and uh, anyway but uh, <clears throat> um, my parents and back in the day. Uh, th- this will actually roll into another subject that I wanted to get into, but uh, my parents used to—they uh, would drop a 
you know, they have a party at the drop of a hat, like in their backyard, kind of like I do, kind of like the the tradition oh, that I man. keep going and everything. This last twenty, uh, yeah. last Fourth of July was nuts. Yeah, it's off the hook. <laughs> but uh, my parents had this wonderful backyard, and they would have people over and everything. And uh, you know, since they were more cosmopolitan and more worldly and everything like that. There would be people, like I said, back in the 60s and 70s and 80s and stuff like that that would that would come through town, some big acts and, and stuff like that, that would uh, – my my mother or my father either through, uh, through theater or, or production or something like that would know them, and they would uh, uh, come through town, and after the show or before the show or if they had a night over or something like that – they would go over to her, they would come over to Hereford and come to parties at my parents' house and I mean I was three years old, three years old and I met uh, I met Frank Sinatra, I mm. met uh, I, I I met uh, I met Bob Hope, I met some uh, um, uh, I met uh, I never I, I I'm too young to remember meeting yeah. Janet meet, meeting Janice Joplin but she was she was from from Texas and everything like that so. So anyway, there were a lot of people that that I grew up. It's one of those kind of things we're, you were talking about famous people that you're like, if you don't know who that person is, you're like, oh my god. I didn't. But but yeah, there were a lot of there were a lot of artists and 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 painters and 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 writers and stuff like that. That that's as crazy. they came through, they had connections or, or they knew they knew my parents or my parents knew them or something like that, and they would come hang out at the fucking house. That yeah. reminds me of like Polly Shore. Cause, yeah, uh, yeah. Like he, like he would grow up. He grew up in the com. Like his mom mm -hmm. had the comedy store. Yeah. So like I've heard like I've you know just through like watching podcasts and stuff like that. Like he would have like like he like he met you know what I mean like Bill Hicks is just from hanging around. Yeah, just, just hanging around. In. Yeah. Uh, Sam Kennison, I guess, is like one of the things is like he babysat him. Mm -hmm. Like he had to watch him one night. Right. Maybe not like consistently, but like yeah. he he was just a baby kicking it with Sam Kennison, yeah. bro. And like just to grow yeah. up like that right. is so that's the, and like you're in the same world just a different yeah. just a yeah. different genre of art yeah and and jake my my son jake has, has stories that are like that uh, is he, he is he got, into it is jake, he like really big into like well, this? jake jake knows it be, just because you know he he loves you know he, he grew up loving loving what i what i always did and everything and, and jake's got these stories about like uh um like uh Dimebag and Vinny from from Pantera putting him up on the bar when he was like two years old, so he, letting him run so around met the bar. Di oh, yeah, yeah, you said you worked with fucking Pantera. Yeah. God yeah. damn. Yeah, I knew Dime. Dime. I knew Dime. I, I mean, I, I see. Uh, you know, I go whenever I go down to Dallas. You know, Vinny's Vinny Paul still got uh, his his place. His folks uh, live out between between Fort Worth and Dallas in a little place called Pantago. And they got a farm out there, and, and you know I know those guys, and you know I know the guys from Hell Yeah, and the guys from Seven Dust now, and, and, and everything. And uh, um, uh, Hell Yeah, hold uh, on, is that is that the one that ha who's the singer of Hell Yeah? Um, Isn't it is it, is it the dude yeah, from Mudvayne? Mudvayne, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. Right. I used well, to love Mudvayne. I don't know, I, oh, yeah. could, I just quit listening to music like that for well, some reason. Mm, well, Mudvayne's a, a wonderful band. But uh, but um, it's like a, a original lead singer, uh, Dave Williams of Drowning Pool, was my roommate in college. The one, and, the one who's like, let the body yeah. hit the fuck. Yeah, D and and Dave Williams was he was one of those kind of guys. He was, I knew him, I knew him totally before he was he was famous. But he was just one of those kind of guys. That whenever I was in college. Uh, you know, he's, he was one of my roommates and everything, and he was in a couple of different bands there locally in Dallas, and he was just one of those kind of people that you knew he was going to be a fucking rock star. That's awesome. He just exuded that exuded that, that confidence and that, you know, joie de vivre or whatever that, that he just you just knew he was going to be a fucking rock star. That's amazing. It yeah. sucks that he passed away. Oh, yeah. It, w it was terrible. He died, on a, he died on a tour bus in Louisiana. Damn. Um Man, uh, have you ever, and like, I know this is like a weird question. You don't have to say the name if you have. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met an artist that you were really, really excited to meet and it's just like they were rude or they like just kind of like. Mm, yeah. Like, yeah. They were, they like was, they're above you. Yeah. And, like, and yeah. you're just like, man, what the fuck? Like, I'm, I'm helping well, you. Well, I mean, it, it's, it wasn't, I haven't ever had the experience where I met somebody that, that I was like really excited. Like it'd to break meet. my heart if I met, te if I met tech nine and he yeah. was just like, fuck you, bro. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> there, <laughs> there's not really, there's not really anybody that, 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 
I, I don't know. I was overwhelmed to meet them, and then whenever I met them, I was like, oh, it's kind of a douchebag. Or something, right, or just like, like, or like, God, you're um, not. You're way more boring than I thought you yeah. were going to be. Like, um, start talking politics uh, really quick. Yeah, well, that, that's true. Uh, uh, Ted Nugent is kind of too much of a douchebag for for his own good. Yeah, um, well, that's kind I mean, of his I brand. Will, I will, that's yeah, kind of his brand. The it, it, is, it is, but the the thing is, is there's a lot of people, as you know. You know, you 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 know that, that there's people that have uh, either on-screen personalities or public personalities or something like that, and then you know people always say, "Oh, well, if you if you knew him, whenever he's at his house, he's a totally nice guy, he's a totally different kind of guy than than he uh, uh, than than he exudes." It's like it's like Trent Trent Reznor. Uh, he's you know I, I can tell you for a fact because he's actually a good friend of mine that he's you know the the public persona that he has that's kind of edgy and nerd explain like that. Trent is the nine Trent Reznor is the lead singer of Nine Inch Nails yeah, yeah. Um, anyway but but Ted Nugent is uh, he's he he's a douchebag on stage he's a douchebag behind the scenes he's, he's also been famous forever yeah he has you he, know what I mean it's kind of yeah, hard yeah. like I mean he he started out. Ted Nugent started out in a, in a band in the early early seventies called the Amboy Dukes that that was that was a, 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 a true American rock band and, and everything and I mean he was you know he he did a lot of stuff and he made a lot of strides and everything and he was a really cool personality and everything but as you know I, I don't know if he as he got older he's just it it kind of goes to to the whole political thing that that I have that that I have you know. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I have leaning, I, I have opinions or, or beliefs that are, that somebody will say, oh, well, that makes you a leftist or, or, or this belief that makes you right wing or something like that. It's, I just, you know, I basically, Tyler probably brought this up, um, on your, on your last show and everything that, that there's, you know, there, there's political middle ground to where well i've talked you, about you that a hundred believe- times yeah i know like, i know I, you have too about like, about that there's like how some- i'm i'm cool with guns but right. i also think it's like i'm mm-hmm. i'm i i guess i'm pro-choice as well right. so how, how yeah. where would you place me right where you would place it's facebook the, the says one, i'm yeah. re- uh says i'm conservative right. i went and found the little thing yeah. they're like well he's conservative the one, the one that i always get the always one that i always get is that i've been a i've been a very very all my life i've been a very pro- strong proponent of gay rights but I'm, you know, I, 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 you know, you know me. I shoot guns all the time, and you know, so everybody. Yeah, it's weird. Well, how, how come you can't own a gun and right. also be like, gay people should be able to get right. married? Yeah, like, I, I don't know, understand I don't. that. People try to. People <laughs> always try to pigeon. They will try to pigeonhole me into that. That that oh, well, because your belief, because you have this right wing belief. Well, dude, and it's stacked against here, you right now. You have an I, American I, hat I, on. You drive I, a, I, truck, a truck. You love guns. <laughs> Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. yeah well, you clearly yeah. hate gay people. Yeah. <laughs> like, clearly hate gay people. Yeah. You know, I'm a complete racist and I hate uh, gay people. Yeah. It's so, that, it's you know. so weird. Just perspective. Like, and then like, yeah, you're right. Tyler and I did talk about that. Right. Like, yeah. cause like, I feel like I sit somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. I knew, I knew that he probably talked about that on your show because he and I, when I saw him, I think it was last night, we got into that discussion again because he's, he's a, he's, um, He's what, what the same thing that I would be considered is is a a, a progressive or a uh, or, or a independent or whatever the fuck that's called. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know what 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 you call it. I, I don't, don't know. Even put I, part I, of a party. It was because there's only two to choose from, and we don't identify right. with either one. Yeah. Dude, that's what we should do. You know how you don't identify with a, like a gender? You can do that. Right. We should do like a political. Yeah. None of the above. Yeah, whatever, that kind of thing. We, we need like, like I don't identify with either yeah. any of these, and you yeah. you owe it to me for me right. to feel comfortable. So give me a third choice. Yeah, right. It's like it's like uh, in like like for example, in the last election, you know, there was there there was. Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, and there was like and seventy-five, I'm not, and and everybody's like, "Oh, well, you either got to be a Hillary supporter, you got to be a Trump supporter." And I'm like, "I don't really support either one of them." I think like I I, I didn't I want Trump to win, except for I was kind of like, "I want to see if it's funny." Yeah, I and thought then, yeah, but I, I I remember I remember you were gonna do the like a couple of days before the election, you were doing you you were gonna do a show like on that Wednesday, like right after the. The yeah, Tuesday the day of the after, election, yeah. and you didn't know how to write it because didn't know. You, you didn't know. Yeah. You were like, I've got all these jokes stored up with these Hillary ones. If Hillary wins and these Trump ones, if Trump wins, but but I just don't know. You know, yeah, I was like, I can't, I can't run them. Right, I can't, yeah. I can't figure out what I can't. 
you know, do you, you couldn't you couldn't rehearse. Yeah. Because you're like, what what set do I rehearse? I sat with? at the bowling alley Tuesday night. Uh, Brett at the time, I, I don't even remember where she was working. Uh, they had a like a birthday party for one of the employees. Everyone's up there getting drunk. Yeah. And they're all bowling, dude. And I'm sitting at the fucking bar watching the TV, just <laughs> like going over jokes. Going I have them jokes. split down the middle. <laughs> And like, but here's the thing: is like, I wanted, I I wanted Hillary to lose more than I wanted Trump to lose, just because she's fucking yeah. scary. Well, see that that's the thing about about this last election, and I even you know, I I, I every once in a while, I'll, you know, I'll write a some kind of opinionated Facebook post. I don't do it very much because I don't care for for people that that really, you know, bear bear their you know, put their heart on their sleeve on fucking Facebook. I'll, 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 I'll only do it if I if yeah. I can work in some punchlines. I think. Yeah, the, if, like, if if I, I if I've funny. thought out the argument or, or something, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll write it on there. But uh, I was, I wrote a thing that said that said this last election was not necessarily people voting for whoever would be the best candidate. They were voting for one candidate so that the other candidate didn't win. Yeah, that you know, was it. It was they they weren't you know, voting for somebody, they were they voting, voting against, against someone. Yeah, that's yeah. that that's the whole thing. Yeah, they weren't voting for someone, they were voting against. And someone. like I get that Bernie's all of his shit went a Okay, this is the thing. Everyone's like, all the shit he's saying wouldn't work. It's like, right. but are you hearing the yeah. bat shit crazy <laughs> things Trump's saying? Yeah, t- uh, yeah. He's, Those aren't going to work either. He said yeah. he's going to build a fucking wall. This guy right. was like, I might get everybody health care. Tell me yeah, the difference. What's the difference? Right. There's a yeah. big difference yeah, in that the whole one. The whole building the wall thing, I mean, of course. And they yeah, started like, it, didn't they? Yeah, they they started it, but, I mean, that's that's a – Dude. That's a, a terribly <laughs> – that's a trillion dollar at least – you know, project. It, dude, a, can, it, you know, he the, was already over budget. Right. <laughs> yeah, and and for I, this and whole I love term. The, yeah for the whole entire term. He's and already I, over budget. And I love I love the whole thing about about um, you know that that they'll spend you know ten trillion dollars to build a thirty foot wall, and then somebody will go to Home Depot and buy a thirty two foot ladder. ladder yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, it's just... And then they'll rappel down the side. Rappel, pa- yeah, rappel down the other side or something. First off, I mean, 30 feet's pretty big. That That's like... Yeah. Okay, just think about it like this. This is this is a fun little thought. Let's say, like, the wall gets fully built, right? Da-da-da-da-da. And then, like, nuclear fallout kind of thing, right? Yeah. And then, so there's only, like... And so hundreds of years later, people are finally starting to, like, the earth, earth is repopulating itself, uh-huh. right? And then they find that fucking wall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like 300 right. years after. Right. There's just a 30-foot fucking wall surrounding a country. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like like True. blocking it off from everyone else. Blocking it off. Right. And just and, that. And, imagine know. how fucking scary you'd be walking up on that thing. Like yeah. if you didn't know what it was. Right. Oh, yeah. Like if they didn't announce it to the world that we were uh-huh. doing it, like they just did it. And they then just did it. Some guy's running in the desert Bam. about to hit it and he sees it. He's like, what? Like, holy shit. What's that about? And do you, and then you yeah. just assume it's like the like it's like like the Truman Show, like mm-hmm. like, the, like the Simpsons glass right, bubble. Yeah. You're like, like you're like the, the we're in trapped in here. Like yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, that that would be totally weird. And he's making it see through so no one gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people just oh. run into it and shit. Oh my god. Yeah, but Dude, have uh, you seen that? Sh- there's a there's a show called My Car Our Cartoon President. And it's I, I've seen Stephen Colbert. It's like a it's like a Showtime show or something. I've seen like a preview for it or something, but I'm not I'm not real familiar with it. I might be able to. I'm just gonna see if I can find like a uh, if I can find like a trailer real quick. Okay. Dude, this is one of the. Have you seen a trailer for it? This is legit no. one of the funniest fucking things. No. Let's see. Is that Anderson Cooper? CBS CBS. News. <laughs> You're watching 60 Minutes. Here's Anderson Cooper. <laughs> her birth name is Stephanie Clifford, but elementary school history books will forever refer to her as Stormy Daniels. In 2006, she allegedly had sex with a recently married Donald Trump, his chin dripping with a Lipitor bowl hormone cookie dough milkshake. <laughs> then she accepted $130,000 to stay silent about what Americans already instinctively knew in their amygdala hindbrain. Here now is President Trump's side of the story. 
Stormy Daniels is lying, unless she says I'm a wild cat in bed, in which case it's all true. If this didn't happen, why did she receive $130,000 from Michael Cohen, your lawyer, who always looks like he just realized he ate some bad clam? The money was consolation for missing out on the most intense, orgasmic, sexual awakening of her life. I approach lovemaking like I approach the breakfast buffet. Me first, and always a guy nearby making omelets. Do you plan to pay back your life? Nope. Stormy Daniels claims you did not sign the non-disclosure agreement. I was too busy planning Space Force. Isn't it great that <laughs> cops, crazy. teachers, and astronauts are now militarized? Hey, IRS <laughs> agents, get ready for calculators that shoot 20 rounds a second. <laughs> Daniels have compromising pictures and videos of <laughs> Oh my god. That's fucking awesome. <sighs> Dude, yeah, yeah, I've only watched one episode of it because it, it, it just came on yeah. and uh, it just came on after I was watching Showtime right. on, on Hulu. Yeah. And uh, I was watching I'm Dying Up Here. And, um, yeah, dude, uh, sorry, my friend just sent me a, some dope news. Um, yeah, it was one of the funniest fucking things I'd ever seen. He was laying in bed with the TV, with the remote, changing yeah. the channel, just going, fake news, fake, fake news, <laughs> fake news. <laughs> like, dude, it's, it's so funny. Uh, dude, it's, this has been a weird thing. Yeah, it's, I know. It's the, the whole, the whole Trump presidency has, has been Su- super weird because, because I mean, we're we're on a weird where we don't we're not really in the battle so uh-huh. we're we're looking at it through like a viewer's perspective like right. we're, I'm just kind of watching you right. know what I mean? there's I know, a lot of us just yeah, doing that I, I've, I I am too I I'm just sort of sitting back I'm not and, arguing and with anybody doing, doing my own you know doing doing my own thing and you know I guess you know what his presidency has not really affected much of anything that i do As so of, i'm just yeah my day-to-day life is and, pretty normal yeah it's <laughs> pretty normal it's not really affected by that but i mean there's a lot of people there's a and lot I'm, of people out there that are just still it's just so fucking up in arms and just like oh my god trump trump is such a racist and he's a you know he's misogynist and he's terrible and he fucked a porn star and he blah 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 and all this stuff like that and it's like you know i mean yeah, it happened. Bill, but. <laughs> Bill Bill Clinton had a had a had a chick blow him in the fucking <laughs> Oval Office. Okay, I'm yeah. serious. And you she's know? famous now. Yeah, Trump Trump was like <laughs> years and years ago. Maybe he banged a porn star or something like that. And if you ever, I don't know who does. I mean, he's who, a billionaire, and he gave her 130 grand. Yeah, I know. I know. Dude, for a million, like, she would have shut up. What yeah. are you doing? Why didn't you just give her a million? Yeah, you have there, so many of the millions. Yeah, just there, give her the million. There's a comedian. I can't remember. I can't remember who the comedian was, but he was a, a comedian that I heard that was talking about the whole Bill Clinton thing. That the comedian said, "I want to be, I want to be so famous that I make other people that I can make other people famous." Monica Lewinsky was made famous by sucking Bill Clinton's dick. <laughs> yeah, seriously, it was one hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's like, and, you know, that. I mean, we could go off on a whole tangent about that, about about people, I used to do people it. getting fame over <coughs> weird shit. Oh know? my god! In the modern day, yeah, like the Kardashians. You know how like they say every every like civilization, there's just a point where they just, it, just it folds in on itself. Right, I know. It just it's, it, we're here. Crum- this yeah, is we're it. here. It just crumbles and stuff yeah, we're, like that. Yeah, we're looking at and it. I, and I'm sitting back, you know, and I've got, I've got my views. I, you know, I've, I've got the things that I'm passionate about, and there's, there's, you know, certain political, political agendas that I'm passionate about and stuff. But I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just sitting back and watching the, the, the pieces just kind of fall, fall into place wherever they may fall. You I know? feel like they're doing it on purpose, man, because whenever <laughs> whenever shit came out about Trump first, and then when it first started yeah. happening, we're all like, damn, yeah. Yeah. that's crazy. And yeah. now when it happens, we're like, like <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, man. Like, that's he keeps crazy. doing it. He's keeping it, yeah. Th- and then, like, the, that person, like, who, like the, the disgruntled employee who just erased his Twitter, and then they brought it right back, which shows you this shows you there's no erasing anything on the right. Internet. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, yeah. That, that's the thing. You know, you probably hear the old adage about, you know, people 
people that are as old as I am is, you know, thank, thank God there was no Facebook or Twitter or anything like Dude, that. I posted back in the something day about that because because they're the, you know the shit that we did did back in the day. If there was photographic evidence of it, that dude, would be I, I posted something about that the other day. I was like, is anybody else like super pumped that we didn't grow up with that shit? Mm-hmm. Like and I, I mentioned, like Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Snapchat, yeah, because like I most of the videos I watch on platforms like that are cringy and you they, yeah. I mean, you laugh you laugh super right. hard but they're cringy uh-huh. you're like oh my god i feel so bad for that like in 20 years this kid has to look at this video and I remember know. i posted it yeah and i'm I so it's glad like, i wasn't able to do that to myself yeah it's like you know you know 40 40 50 years from now you know there'll be some kid sitting there going going oh Here's a picture of Grandma whenever she was young doing a keg stand and making out with with some getting other, a beer smashed on her face by some frat face. boy. Yeah, by some frat. That boy. poor father. Yeah, I know. Dude, that's what I first. I'm not even, I don't even have kids. I don't even have kids. I saw that video. I was like, dude, I feel so bad for her dad. Yeah. Because he's gonna scroll by it just like I did. You know what I mean? It's out yeah. there. Yeah, it's just he's out not, there. He's and, not gonna not yeah. see it. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Because he got it's, tagged it's, in it already. Yeah. Everything's on blast. <laughs> you know, it's just completely on blast. I mean, you know. I knew he saw it before I did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, back back in the day, you know, there were a couple of us like like me. I had a I had like a. a VHS camcorder that I used to, to think it was fun. Oh, I had the shoulder one. I take that motherfucker to parties and stuff like that, and I've got like some party. I had tapes the big clip on fucking battery on yeah, the back. Mine was yeah. a uh, RCA. Yeah, I've got some party tapes from from like fucking thirty years ago and stuff. And you know, there there are people that there there are people that now are like you know business owners and they're like like fathers and mothers and grandmothers and stuff like that. But you know, it was. That's the only real evidence of it, and it's on videotape. But but Dude. with the like with with Facebook and with all that stuff, you can upload a picture, and if people are interested in it enough, you know they'll they'll share it or they'll they'll you know they'll like on Reddit or something like that. They'll upvote it or something. I can't do. I don't. Like I don't understand billion Reddit fucking people or Twitter. I don't. I don't either. I don't do Twitter. I don't do Reddit. I just I see. I, I I'm almost done with Facebook except for and, promotion yeah. and yeah, I know. Uh, I'm, stuff like that. I was actually – we were talking about that earlier in, yeah. part, in part one. Part one because this, this is part two, motherfuckers. motherfucker. And uh, actually, you know, we were talking about that, about Facebook, about, you know, how, how uh, terrible <laughs> it's becoming. Um, I went home and I was like – I opened up Facebook and I just kind of looked at, at my feed and stuff. And Saw a baby just, get punched in the face. Baby get punched in the face. <laughs> yeah. And then it's all these other – it's like I was talking about, about all these people that, that feel like that their lives are, are, are terrible and, and they write the, these you know things about, oh, I can't find love again and like that. And they don't realize that, that in that platform they telegraph that shit. You know, it's like – it's like, oh, I feel bad, and somebody else feels bad, and everything, and you know. So yeah, the, you're, the you're only, bumming yourself out because you're gonna make your news feed nothing I know, but sad right, shit. Right? Yeah, you're bumming, you're bumming your own self out. And All my stuff like is that. comedy usually, and then yeah, I know. Random. You're, 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 you know, your shit is funny. My, my shit, is, you know, the, whenever I write something, it's usually, you know, some, some kind of weird joke and everything. I used to have this thing that on. Uh, like Friday and Saturday night, I'd I'd write a I write a thing, you know. I'd, I'd say everybody have a good gig tonight, and then I'd I'd write, you know. Yeah, some, I remember that. Some funny little little quip about about um, you know. Um, I used to pre- enjoy pretty, that, especially pre- if I had a gig that yeah, night. Pretty on the inside won't get you free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what I find really impressive? You and I were actually talking with Brandon about starting that show. Remember? You, yeah, we, yeah, so and I was the- actually I was actually gonna. We we still need to talk about that because we're still in a place to where, to where we could actually do it and everything. It's just that that we need to sit down and and like I've written some, you know, I've written down some ideas and stuff, uh, not really a script, but just I some ideas how to write a that script. I want, that I that I want to use. But I really, you know, I you know, it's one of those kind of things that I see in my head and everything. And you know, if we shot it right and, and did it right and everything and did it as a YouTube series or something. Uh, you know, it, 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 we could do some really cool stuff and everything. Like I was gonna say, what impresses me is uh, like those little like people doing those like videos like that, like that. Even if it's that one girl, I don't uh-huh. find it. I don't think they're super funny, but I see them that they're like Steven. Yeah. Oh, you know I mean? yeah. She's 
some know, of them, some of them are pretty funny, really but like, it's a little overplayed. Like I see yeah. them all the time now. Right. Um, but like uh, I really enjoy Tyler Valentine's like Bevo in the Wild. Oh, Bevo in the Wild is wonderful. Yeah, I, I love I, I love Bevo in the Wild. I think there's a new episode of Bevo in the Wild. It yeah, should there, be up. It should be. I think that there was. I think he posted one yesterday. He or just said he was like gonna, he, I know he filmed because, one yesterday. He yeah. said he had to edit it after the podcast because yeah, Bevo was was out of town. She went on like a little little woods vacation for like a week but she's back she's back in town i saw her last night so i guess that he did one i bet that would be so nice dude to to imagine just being able to like go if you had like enough supplies you just go camping for a week oh yeah and then like cut like dude turn the phone off yeah we were actually computer down actually uh no fucking tv no netflix brandon brandon and uh hayden hudson another one of our friends uh we were talking about that about, you know, since I've been going up to, I've been doing, setting up tours up in Colorado Springs, going up there and finding a place out in the woods and just going up there and camp. Don't, don't take your fucking cell phone or your iPad. I mean, you have or, to have it for emergencies. Yeah, but, but I mean. But just turn that shit off until turn, you need it. Yeah, turn it and off. Take a but, picture. But no wherever Wi-Fi, you, just go out there and just fucking hang and out. And then you post all that shit when you get back to normal life. Yeah, you go back, this is what yeah, I did this week. Yeah, get drunk. I could never do weed. it. I you know, don't think so. No, I would. I would try. I'd go. I the first. I bet during the day it'd be fine. Yeah. Once it got dark, dude, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? You're just sitting around a campfire, getting drunk, right? You're like, oh, you're gonna pull up Netflix, bro. Yeah, you're going to. Well, I mean, think about it. Think, think about uh, maybe maybe you go with the creature comfort of being able to play music. It wouldn't be unlike going to a party at my house because right. when we go to my house, whenever we have parties at my house, we eat, we sit around the fire, and we listen to music. And right, we talk. But, but we all still pull our cell phones out yeah, and take pictures right. and post yeah. them on Facebook. We posted a video of us blowtorch, like uh, that giant blowtorch, to start mm-hmm. that fire. Yeah, starting the fire and me shooting a fucking shotgun down my driveway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, like even then, we yeah. couldn't stop pulling those fucking phones out. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. You know. Maybe maybe a good yeah, that's more. a that's a that'd be like a crazy. We like know if you, if we know if enough musicians we could like get mu- some musicians to go with this and just sit around like the a campfire and thing. play and play kumbaya. That's a thing you have to bet somebody. You have to you have right. To, you know like you, I bet you, you know like you a, like a challenge thing. You right. know, like instead of like let's go to the gym every day for twenty days. Right. Whoever flakes out first has to buy dinner. Dude, this fucking right. dude. L- 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 we'll both leave our cell phone on this fucking table right. at our other friend's house. Yeah. And it'll stay there for 30 days. Yeah. And then we can turn it on. Like, like, but then you got your TV, dude. Everyone has smart TVs. You're going to find a way to cheat, get on right. your Xbox oh, yeah, and you get on like, Facebook. Mm, play a game or something like that. And, like, it's it's to a point now because, like, dude, if someone hits me up on Xbox Live, it shows up on my phone, mm-hmm. right? Like, so, like, if, if I can be in my studio and my phone goes off, like, bing, like, don't forget mm-hmm. Thomas wants to play Xbox with right. you. And then... um. And then if you text me on Facebook, if I, if my phone's sitting down, it pops up on my computer, so I can mm-hmm. fucking deal with it there. There's no getting away yeah, from it. Yeah, there's no getting away with it. Um, one of the things that I wanted to that I wanted to talk about. It's uh, a great segue. <laughs> great segue. I, I, well, I tried to segue it while while ago when yeah, we were talking when we were talking about Trump and we were talking about um, actually talking about my 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 parents having the big parties and stuff back in back in the day and everything one of the things that uh here in uh here in the the north part of texas uh in the panhandle uh, you know it's not really been ever been a gay friendly or or gay rights or lesbian rights or something like that area and stuff and in in with that uh one of the purposes that that my my parents backyard served to to have is is uh the fact that they had a lot of friends that were in theater and performance and everything like that and back in the 60s and 70s stuff like that they were closeted gay people and those people were able to come over to my parents house and actually you know be be themselves be themselves and everything you know it wasn't it wasn't act, you know it wasn't a sexualized thing or anything but it was just they, they were, were able, able to, to be themselves. Talk to somebody about talk it. Talk to somebody and about it because you know my you know that has to be really important to tell yeah. somebody. Oh yeah, it, it was very much so. And then whenever I was whenever I was growing up, uh, whenever I was in high school and everything, you know, I knew I knew several people that 
that you know went to Hartford High School that that were you know closeted closeted gay men or or they were lesbians or something and you know they were they were really struggling with it really really struggling with it and so I sort of you know me and some of my friends were were able to to take over that mantle and everything with with within that that whole thing but the thing is is that you know back then and whenever what i believed in and what i supported and everything these days has just really gotten really thrown out of proportion to where to where the the lgbt community as you would call it uh are really you know they're offended by everything and they're bullies and they're bullies they are bullies now not all of them one it's not a blanket statement there's a lot of them out there There that are are bullies well yeah but there's also straight there's straight people that are bullies absolutely but one of the picked on me in high school yeah (laughs) but one of the things that that i always always get into is the whole the whole uh um the whole conversation about uh about gender identity that there's all these people that are they're like gender fluid or they say that there's like 57 different genders or something like that that's so crazy to me okay if if l if lgbt means lesbian gay bisexual and what does the q stand for though queer is that it? Yeah, sure? LGBTQ. Are you sure yes. the Q is queer? The Q is queer, L- because that that's that that's a term. But the thing is, is that the word the 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 anagram LGBT, the B in LGBT means bisexual, which means bisexual on its face means that there's only two genders. Think about that. <laughs> That is kind of crazy. Yeah, though. it is. You know that that they put into the wording, you know, that the B is bisexual. That it means that there's only two genders. Questioning. That's what question. The, okay. That's right. what the key. I was like, well, I, I've actually never looked this up before. All right. Well, I mean, I always thought. I guess that's, that's people have always. That's told just me like that a. That's just queer. like a natural. I think that's what we would naturally think. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. But no, yeah, I that, don't know. It makes sense, but like questioning that still doesn't mean like I might fucking. I don't know, man. And you can't like is what's crazy is uh you get in trouble for not understanding this shit. Yeah. Or, like you go on Facebook and you just I know. don't. Yeah, you, you you try to genuinely ask a question. Ask a question and and you get pounded shit down on. As, as being a you know being a homophobe or, or, or something like. It's that. It's like dog. I don't even like I f- I really don't understand. And yeah. like and that's what, but that's what's crazy to me, is like I don't want to end up being that guy. Yeah. Who's I, like I, I'm like. Like right. I, like you don't want to be like the old like the old dude who thinks it's okay to throw around racial slurs because right. that's what they did in the thirties. Yeah. So you don't want to be that guy, mm-hmm. like not understanding it's not okay. Right. You know what but I mean? You, so you you accidentally say something that that triggers or someone. it's super funny. You're trying right. to be funny. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, dude, it's it is. You're right. It is fucking bananas. Yeah. But uh, you know, I get. And they say that they're being marginalized, but they're like, but like, you, I was like, it's happened to me where I was asking questions. I was just genuinely curious, like, what, what do you mean by this? Right. Like, what is this? And they're like, I'm a gender fluid, non-binary. Right. And like, I'm having to Google words, words. and try to right. figure out yeah, what, what the is, hell they're saying. What like, does that mean? And what then like, you, and why is it, why am I an asshole for not understanding right. that? Right. And someone, someone, uh, um, giving, try, you, giving you, giving you their pronouns. Have that you, are you supposed to, you're supposed to refer to them as they or them or uh you know something like that you know you you don't say he or she or her or him you say they or them or you know th- things like that but i mean the, the 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 big thing is that is that i remember i remember you know back uh, whenever I was younger and everything, around here, around here, and before, in a lot of other places. Before we get too far away from this, just because this is exactly what we were explaining, okay. um, I have a little clip pulled up. You know Patton Oswald. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, this is, he explains, I think, exactly, and he puts it, because he's a comic, he puts it in a, like a really like palatable okay. manner. All right. A more committed, progressive, feminist, pro-gay, pro-transgender person but I cannot keep up with the fucking glossary of correct terms, yeah. goddammit. Yeah. I'm trying. I want to help, but holy fuck, 
They, it's like a secret club pass where they change it every week, and then you're in trouble. That's not the word we use. Fuck, you just, <laughs> it was last week? I have hemorrhoids. My ass is falling out. I want to help. I know I'm an old, cis, white motherfucker, but don't give me shit because I didn't know the right term. Fucking RuPaul. RuPaul got into shit for saying tranny. Ru fucking Paul. Ru Paul, who she laid down on the barbed wire of discrimination throughout the 70s and 80s so this new generation could run across her back and yell at her for saying tranny. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck? And look, I just... He's about to get to like what, what exactly right. you and I were talking All about. Right. I will always change. I will always try to learn the new terms. But you got to give me some fucking wiggle room. All right? My ass is falling out. I'm trying. I'm trying. And by the way, I don't know if you know, if you get hung up on words, then you're going to let a lot of evil motherfuckers slip through. Because evil people learn the correct terms very quickly. I don't know if you noticed that. They're the first ones to learn it so they can smuggle their evil shit through by saying everything correctly, even though they're hiding really bad shit in it. And a lot of times the good guys, eh, they fuck up a couple of words, but listen to their heart. All right, I'm gonna give you two guys right now. One of them is a good guy and one of them is a bad guy. I'm not gonna tell you which one. <laughs> See if you can spot the good guy and the bad guy. Here's guy number one. While I happen to be heteronormative and certainly respect people who uh, have alternate lifestyles, including gay, bi, uh, lesbian, transgender, omni, or pansexual, I still think that heteronormative uh, behavior is a biological imperative, at least for propagating the species, and I uh, believe that that does deserve the highest priority. That was guy number one. Here's guy number two. If a couple of fags want to get married or some dykes, they want to be men. How the fuck does that affect you, asshole? You know? And then the whole, listen, hey, uh, if, if there's a, there's some tranny out there, it's like, hey, I don't want to, I don't want a dick no more. I want a, I want a vagina. Then boom, guess what? It's, it's a she now. Or whatever the fuck, she, it, I don't know. Whatever they want to call themselves, that's it. Don't affect you with it. So if you see some guy, I don't care if he's got a chooch that looks like a Boris Karloff horror movie. We gotta, well, you gotta share the planet with that guy, all right? Or that girl. I don't fucking know. Let, they'll tell me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what we're talking it's, about. Yeah, it, right. It's it, it's the it's the difference between the two people. You know, you you can stay up on the terminology and everything like that, and yeah, and still be, really not give a shit about really it. Still really not give a shit about it, right? I, you know, but you know, I've I've always I've always wanted to respect people as as respect to their their sexuality or their gender. And then you don't want to hurt their don't. feelings, so you you try. Yeah. You, we tr like I'm, I don't even know what omnisexual means, dog. Right, I know. Or pan, I don't. Yeah, I, I yeah. I, I don't, don't want to hurt their feelings. You, yeah. know, you don't want to make you don't you never want to intentionally hurt someone's feelings. Yeah, I I don't either. I, I I wouldn't either. I mean, you know, I'm always I'm always very respectful. Very respectful. I mean, like, that, I mean um, if you tell me without any attitude, I'll I'll call you. You know, I'll call yeah, you whatever you I'll want. I'll call you whatever you want. If, <laughs> but you like, just, if you just tell me what you want me to call you, I'll fucking call you that. Yeah. You know, it's. But don't it's, don't it's, don't jump my case because I didn't just assume it. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, don't 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 assume that that I already know what what you you know want me to do, and don't say that. Don't say that I'm a old school homophobe racist or something like that because you know I accidentally you know, refer to you as, hey, that girl over there wants a drink or something. We should, you know? we should make a video like that where you dress super patriotic. <laughs> you know, like, they're like, dude, but you like guns <laughs> and like stuff like that. You're like, look at your truck. You're like, <laughs> I, I bought it because it was American. Man, I'm about our <laughs> country, man. Like, right. I just, I love you guys. Like, you're like wearing like an American flag t-shirt or right. something like that. You just look patriotic right. and redneck, yeah. like, but like be about their life. That'd be, that'd be a fun video to yeah. shoot. But I mean, it's you know, I I always try to, from a political standpoint or from a from a rights perspective, I always try to respect what what people are feeling and the reasons they feel it and everything. <clears throat> it's like uh, it's like 
the whole Colin Kaepernick thing. Um, you know, him starting to kneel on the sideline and stuff like that. You know, whenever that first started, it was like, oh, well, he's an NFL player and he should be standing up for the national anthem and he should be doing this and all, all that and everything. And once again, like I was talking about in part one, Ayo, uh, shout you know, out. I always try to, instead of having a knee-jerk reaction, having a knee-jerk reaction to something that I see on the news or on Facebook and not checking the sources or the reasoning behind that or something, you know, I, I sort of looked at what, you know, what Colin Kaepernick and, and some of those other football players and some other people that were, like, taking a knee during the national Did that anthem mess with were you? doing. Like, whenever you first read it, was it? Well, whenever I first read it, I was I was like I was like okay, well, uh, you know, I I don't really understand why they're doing this. I'm not gonna get super super ass offended. But you wanted to be like part of you, like initially you were offended until you sat back and thought about it. Yeah, until well, until I not really thought about it, but once I got the information and stuff like that. Yeah. He was not protesting the national anthem. He was not protesting the American flag. He was, what he was doing is he was he was basically protesting what has is really happened. You know, yeah. cop, cops killing black guys and and you know stuff like that. And I think it, I mean I can't I can't really I remember reading the wording of of how how it was, you know, explained and how he explained what it was, but it wasn't to be disrespectful to, yeah. to the soldiers or to the, to, to the teachers or to the, to the cops or, or, or anything like that. It was just to, I don't know. I quit watching fucking football. Cause that's all, it, that's all it became about. Yeah. I never, I, yeah, that, that was the whole thing. Yeah. Everybody was all about every, every football game. It wasn't about, it wasn't about okay. Well, we're gonna sit here and we're gonna watch the football game. It was about okay, who's gonna kneel during the national anthem, and What's during it? during the course of the game, how much are we gonna fuck with them because they kneeled during the national anthem or they stood up during the national anthem or or whatever. What's crazy is the players haven't always been on the field for the national anthem. That's yeah. a relatively new yeah. thing. Yeah, a lot and of them were were in the in the field house. They they, they go to the locker room. And, yeah, they were in the locker room and. You know, they you know why they have them the come, field. You know why they have them come out for why? the national anthem now? Why? It's because the military donates a lot of money to the NFL to have the players on the field so they look patriotic. Yeah. It's a recruiting. Pro- it's a recruiting. It's t- a tactic. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you if like, you if look, you, you're there's, there's a kid sitting at home going, "I fucking yeah. love Tom Brady." Right. I love this, Tom Brady. He's patriotic. Yeah. I'm gonna go fight right. for my fucking country. NFL today is brought to you by the Marines. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. that's why they're out there. So to be offended for something that didn't even exist. Until like the last maybe two decades. Yeah, true. Is ridiculous. True. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember back back in the day they they would do the thing where where uh, you know they'd go through in the opening ceremony of any football game or at least a, I know the Super Bowl. You know, somebody would come out and sing the national anthem, and they have the flag flown on the field. And they would have the flyover and stuff like that, and then like here's here's Dude. the team, and they would come out of the you know they they would come out of the <laughs> what from, from the locker room to kneel while someone's singing the national anthem. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't know why it's killing me right now. Mm. She's up there trying her hardest. She looks right. over to see your ass and kneel. <laughs> somebody taking a fucking knee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, they used to have like the, like the flyovers are crazy. How do they time mm. that? Oh yeah, I that's my favorite part. How do they that's time what, that? That's always been my favorite part of the Super Bowl. That's cra- I don't know like I don't understand. Because like, they can they 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 can time it. I mean, it's, like, you you want me to tell you the production aspect of it? I can tell you exactly what what it is. The whoever's singing it, whoever's singing it either rehearsed it a couple of times and t- said, "Okay, I'm going to sing it at this pace, at this banner, the band's going to go this fast, or there's a backing track." That is at this tempo or something like that. Yeah. And so from the time that the person starts singing, singing it, we know that it's going to be a minute and forty three seconds or a minute and fifty six seconds or something until 
you know, they go home in the home of the brave. And so the the, the, the pilots the, the pilots can get out there and they say, okay, you know, because they're trained pilots that know how long it's going to take from to get from here to there. They can they can do it to where to where they can time it exactly right, right on the last note. That's so you know? crazy to me. That's production, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fucking production. Here's right the best. There. This is the best national anthem, dude, I've ever heard in my life, man. <laughs> oh God, yeah, I remember this. Oh yeah. Oh. So you just. I forgot how bad yeah. 1990 Roseanne looked oh, yeah. until we looked this up the other day. Are they booing at her? Oh, yeah, they're the booing the shit at her. <laughs> and she fucking grabs her, at the end, she grabs her crotch and spits on the ground or something like that. Jesus, just, this isn't the video, though. This yeah. is, uh, the, the, like the end of it might be the video. Well, yeah, there you go. Oh, killing it, baby. Ooh. Ooh. Brutal. Ooh. Where was that? Was that was at the pa- a Padres game. It was, a, it was a, in San Diego. God damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, that was. She's been, she's been crazy forever. Yeah, I know that was fucking brutal. Yeah, I mean, and then I, she just lost her show. Yeah, I don't know that whole thing. I didn't even watch the show. I haven't even I watched it. I didn't watch the So revamp. I don't know what the controversy was. She Dude, tweeted, I, I would have. She tweeted something about something. And, I would have been you know. shocked if you if you told me you had watched that. Yeah, show. I know. I I hadn't watched it. You know, I I'd have looked at you weird. Like yeah, that's right. a good what? joke, right? Are you right. are you yeah, fucking are you kidding me? Fucking kidding me. Yeah, but but yeah, I haven't watched it. I haven't yeah, I haven't. It. But I guess uh, <laughs> she lost that shit. Right. It's just man, everyone gets in trouble eventually. You know yeah. what I mean? Everyone's. I, yeah, everybody. You know, everybody's under a microscope. Everybody. You know, any move that you make, anything that you say, shit that that, and and it's the whole thing we were talking about that 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 whenever I was a kid. I, you know, in high school and stuff like that, I'm so glad that the internet wasn't around because the shit that we did is there was photographic evidence of it. It'd be terrible and everything. But the thing is now, what we're having is we're having a a, a generation or or a, or a time a time uh, in in history right now to where shit like that that you said off the cuff or you said at a party or you said or, or you did just for fun or you you know says that oh that girl's got really nice tits or something like that 16 fucking years ago at a party at somebody's house before you were even running for congress or or you were trying to be president something oh, like no that, one, they're gonna bring that shit back yeah like like no one's gonna bring up anything if you're just working at like oh yeah if you're working you're, at mcdonald's or something like yeah, that no nobody gives a shit no one's gonna say a fucking yeah, word but, but, but the moment you have that, some limelight and oh, some, they can they can tag they on some will, fame too oh yeah they will dig they're gonna into jump that. on that shit and it's so easy for people to do that now because you know you can just google somebody's name i mean oh dude you can dig up dirt on anybody so on fast anybody oh yeah and okay. that's what like I've, I've talked about this too man i know there's a, so if i make it if i make it you're someone's gonna make it. you're gonna make it you're so, gonna make it well someone's gonna pull <laughs> oh yeah probably a line from this one honestly probably they'll pull and, a line for that or, or and then uh, fucking videos from my party or something like that yeah, dude, oh look at skyler look out they're just gonna pull a line was. from this and be like do you remember saying like do you remember the time that you said this and i'm like fuck man like <laughs> i i'm sure i followed it up with something funny yeah, you just pulled the one you bad just, thing <laughs> yeah you just took that you took it out of context yeah absolutely man wow. and I, you gotta feel bad when that like when I see like when I see uh, stuff like that in the news, like this person said this, da 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 da, da and like it's just completely, dude, it's one one sentence. Right. You're like, I don't. It, I that might be the hell. Of, that might be the greatest punchline of the century. Right. I don't know the setup. Yeah, you I gotta know, yeah. give me yeah, more than just the, the setup line. To the joke. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, you you're just telling me the punchline, or you're just telling me the setup. You're not giving me the whole context of yeah. what's going on and stuff. You're not giving me the important. Like what you're doing is you're you're sculpting the story for your like. You want to be angry, so you mold the story for other people to be angry. Right, absolutely. You don't give them the the rest of it. Like that's what's crazy about doing comedy, man. You'll say something, you'll just, you'll be going right, 
mm-hmm. and everyone's laughing, everyone's laughing, everyone's laughing. Yeah. Then you say one thing that offends one this one person, and then yeah. they get mad, and they, they want to talk to you, then... and they're like, "Well, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have said that." You're right. like, I mean, "Motherfucker, you were laughing when I was talking about this. Yeah, you, you were, were laughing were when I was talking about that. that. You don't think it, you don't think right. that was offending somebody, yeah. but then they realize this is a right. comedy show." I remember seeing an interview. I, I, you know, like, like I always say, I can remember all these comedians or, or actors and stuff like that that say poignant things and i can remember the the, the conjecture of it but, but i can't remember the exactly person. what they were saying but there was an interview that i saw one time it was like a radio it was like a radio interview with patrice o'neill oh before he died dude and, and, and patrice was patrice, talking to bro. some some lady that was like a total feminist and this feminist was taking having a lot of shitty attitude about something that patrice said and she was like taking it completely out of context and everything and it was it was funny and was funny and it was poignant of what patrice was saying but because she just took the pieces of it that she wanted to be bitching about yeah out of the context of what patrice said um you know it was just he he was sitting there having to fucking defend himself and everything you know, and he's like having having how did, these women's groups protesting his shows and stuff, and he's like, "How the fuck did this happen? How did how does Gavin McGinnis never get in trouble?" I know, I know. I was watching a thing with Gavin McGinnis just yesterday and everything, and he like I, he I never know. gets in trouble. He well, <laughs> like, I don't know if maybe he's not in trouble other than you know, but maybe he just doesn't give a fuck. I I don't know. Maybe but, it's the lack of like yeah zero fucks given. They're like yeah. what, well we're gonna call him out and then right. he's just gonna own up to it and yeah. probably say something worse than what he said originally. I don't oh, want yeah. him on my show. Yeah, yeah. That, um, he says some fucking outlandishly funny things, but then he says some really ignorant things too. Yeah, he does. He does. Um, you know, he he can he can say some stuff that that's you know really interesting and really thought provoking, but just some sometimes he just says some dumb shit. Yeah. And then, like, uh, I, re- I actually used to really, like, uh, he was an atheist, mm-hmm. and um, it actually helped me become brave enough to say I might be, just right. to start questioning it, yeah. harder than I already was. Yeah. And uh, it's so crazy to me that he's not an atheist anymore. Right. Like, he had a kid, and he, on the Joe Rogan podcast, he said, just seeing the heel, he was holding his kid one night, just seeing the, the little heel mm-hmm. on his foot, he was like, yeah. that instantly changed him. Well, yeah, yeah. And I don't see, like, I don't have kids. I have dogs who right. I'm very angry with. Well, yeah, I know. You're very angry with the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm, I sound all rasped. My I voice know. is probably you, you four run, octaves deeper. Right, from <laughs> yelling at the fucking dog. And I just feel bad for him. Yeah. He just wants to get, he just wants he it, man. He wants some pussy. Yeah. I feel bad. And then, like, it's at a point where he's, like, he, he's not eating, dude. <laughs> he's, he's, like, shaking, and you can see it yeah. in his eyes, like, it's. It's a hundred percent out of his control. Yeah, one hundred percent. And you got your other dog that, that won't give him any. Yeah, and she, well, she's just walking around. She doesn't know. What, she doesn't know what she's sitting on. You know what I mean? <laughs> she's just like, she's like, why is he acting crazy? Yeah. Why is Absolutely. he acting so crazy? Absolutely. Because she's just a dog. Like, I, like I humanized Luffy. Like we taught him so much. Yeah. And then it's annoying. He argues. Mm-hmm. He does whatever he wants. Like he's a, like it's fucking annoying. Yeah. So my 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 youngest dog, she knows sit. That's it. That's it. That is it. Like she just walks around like a dog, like yeah. deer, like just like nothing behind the headlights, just right. a fucking dog, and I love it. It's my favorite thing. That's awesome. So I did, did name work with them too. Like I named Luffy Luffy clearly. Right. And uh, it's after One Piece show, Monkey D. Luffy. He was the king of. He wants to be the king of the pirates. He's one of the most determined. You can't stop him if you right. want. Like he does whatever he wants. Yeah. And clearly, the name carries the weight. Mm-hmm. So I named Indica. Indica. In, yeah, just so uh, I was like, I wonder, <laughs> I yeah. wonder, dude. She just lays around all day. Lay, it's amazing. Just chilling. Yeah, yeah, she's just she's just zonked. just just like the Indica. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, she don't give a fuck about nothing but sleeping, dude. Absolutely. She's a year old. Yeah. I can't explain it. But yeah, dude. What else can we talk about? Hollywood. We've already covered like so many of the talk dark, of, dark I mean, things. Dark sh- <laughs> all the all the dark shit. There's just so much going on, dude. Um, like, and then tomorrow, something's gonna happen where we could like. I know. It. Yeah, I we're gonna go. There's probably something. Like, there's probably some that? breaking news right now that's yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. And, was, and I was so, I can't believe Donald Trump is still allowed to tweet. But then you have to go. No, that's so weird. That you know. Like, but then like he runs the he's the president. Like, yeah. who's gonna tell him not to? And then, yeah. Can you believe he said he would? Like, he didn't say he would. Right. But he goes, I can. 
I can't remember how he phrased it, but basically it was like, I haven't done anything wrong, mm-hmm. so I never would. Right. But if I did, I could pardon myself. I could pardon myself. Right. But the did, balls, to, but the balls to say that. I always, I always hear that about about the president tweeted this or Donald Trump tweeted that or he tweeted this or something like that. Did did you know? I know, I know that George W. Bush didn't. He you know he didn't even hardly know how to read an email. But did Obama tweet much? Did he have a Maybe. Twitter account? I think he had. I mean, probably because did. It didn't, but he I wasn't mean, on it. Right. Years it often, just, and it he wasn't. Seems like that, he also wasn't putting out crazy bat shit, I know, fucking bananas. Right. The, the, but it just seems like that everywhere I turn, you couldn't Donald write Trump, what the fuck happened. This yeah, year. Donald Trump is is like you know fucking fucking putting people on blast on Twitter, and I'm Dude, like, he's like, I'm like what to, are you? What are you a fucking twenty five year old girl at the club? Talk Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, but I'm I'm like in like an uh, in elect in like an election speech. Yeah, you like shit on Rosie O'Donnell. Mm-hmm. That's this guy. Like you yeah. gotta give it to him though. Like part of me is like, damn, dude, look at right. look at what you're doing. You're doing the impossible, bro. Like yeah. you're the closest thing to Batman that anyone's mm-hmm. ever seen. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like without a doubt, you are the closest thing to Batman, and you're running the fucking country now. Yeah. Ugh. It, but but it's crazy. I just you know the 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 correlation of you know the president of the United States. I don't know being on Twitter, and I can understand you know like like I know I know that Obama probably had a Twitter account, and he probably had like the official White House account Dude. where he'd he'd tweet out you know Happy Thanksgiving or or something like that. But Donald Trump's tweeting out stuff like like you know. Fuck those North Korean motherfuckers. What do they do? You know, yeah. tweet, tweeting like a 26-year-old girl after fucking five shots of vodka at the club, you know? It's, I'm like, fuck. Well, that's like, like in reality, control. In reality, like, George Bush probably wasn't smart enough to really use a computer. Well, so, he wasn't. I so mean, Obama's like the first well, president who could, like, legit, like... Google himself. Yeah, well, they had and, to. They they had to. Uh, and then like yeah. and then like have interactions like like yeah. via Twitter. Like, dude, yeah. people can just shit talk our president on I know. Twitter. Yeah. I can tweet our president. That should not. Yeah, that shit should not be allowed. Yeah, that's, that's There's what, no you know, reason that I should have the power yeah, to show, reach show out to when, our president. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking stupid. And and it's going going nonstop. I and saw chances are he'll day. fucking answer. Yeah. Because he's doing like, nothing. What's he doing? He's tweeting. That's I'm all just, he's doing. I'm just waiting for the president to be like, be like, uh, you know, Skylar Potter and Emerald Texas, fuck you for saying this. You know, I expect that shit. Yeah. Now, like, dude, you know, that he's going to shit talk. He's going to start getting, you know, putting people on blast, you know. But there's absolutely no reason I should be able to fucking <laughs> talk to him. I know. There's not. It's weird. I shouldn't I, be able to, first off, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be able to talk to him when he was just rich. Right. Uh, there was no reason for me yeah. to be able to talk to him. Yeah. Just like I shouldn't be able to talk to Brad Pitt, talk, but I fucking can. You fucking can. <laughs> he, yeah. may not, he may not read it. I don't right. know, but he I can knows. try. I can super yeah. try. And it's but, not like mailing him a letter like it would be back in the day, and hopefully yeah. he reads it. It's right. like, motherfucker, you got a notification. Yeah. Right there. As soon as it's sent, you got it. You got it. He can read it or not, but it's but there. I remember, I remember uh, seeing the thing whenever the, in the first Obama presidency – that he, uh, uh, that, I forgot that he, he wanted did two to, terms. Yeah, he he wanted to uh, he wanted to be able to check his email and use his iPhone and stuff like that. But White House security was like, no fucking way. So they gave him a BlackBerry. So I mean, there was this whole thing at the first of his presidency about that he was really the first real electronic president because he wanted to carry around a mobile device to where he could read his email and he could email people and stuff like that. And that, that they were going to have to do, you know, super high level encrypted security and stuff on his phone. But because what is, I bet, dude, I bet Trump just has like a boost mobile. Burner. Probably. Yeah. He just fucking, yeah. he just goes, buys right. a new one. He sends an assistant every um, day. He's not supposed to have a phone. They're like, how, yeah. who keeps getting him? He's the got, fucking, yeah. Who's going to boost? He's who's got, doing this? yeah. He's got like fucking, you know, in the oval office, he's, you know, in, in, in the desk, he's got like 15 fucking burner phones yeah, he's in, just, the, he's like in a, the, in in the desk and stuff like the that. The only yeah. app he has on there. He's like, I don't even need minutes. Just right. put, just give me internet access. Yeah, just give me internet access. Access and Twitter. And play fucking Angry Birds. Yeah, I just need Twitter. That's Twitter all I need. Twitter and Angry Birds. That's all I need. Uh, on that cartoon, our cartoon president show, the, the episode that I saw, that his kids go on Fox News or CNN or something like that, and they fuck up tremendously. Like, they start yeah. giving away, like, national secrets right. and shit like that. They start crying on there. 
And then his response to that, he's like, hopefully I can, hopefully my brain comes up with something to tweet that'll get rid of this mess. <laughs> it's anyone's guess what's going to happen until I get on that toilet. That's like, right. Yeah. That fool's just shitting yeah. and he, he drinks more Diet Cokes than you do a day. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. He, he's crazy. Yeah. He's crazy about drinking the Diet Cokes too. But uh, I remember when he first took office, there were a whole lot of the, uh, um, uh, John, like John Oliver. Um, yeah. Of uh, doing last week tonight and stuff, and uh, there were a lot of people that were talking about that he was, you know, that that th- these tweets from him would come in at, uh, you know, seven seven a.m. in the morning, and they knew that he was in the fucking White House, in the residence, sitting there taking a morning shit on on the fucking toilet, tweeting people. So hold you know? on. <laughs> Sending out fucking tweets. That's hilarious. Does it have to go through somebody? <laughs> uh, I I don't know if it has to go in through any other kind of third party or. Something I wish like he would. That. It'd be so cool if he misspelled shit more. Yeah, oh, that yeah. That would be amazing. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be like the only. That's the only yeah. thing that can make this better. Yeah, I don't. If he I, started misspelling all yeah, of his shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if anybody's proofreading his tweets and that, stuff. I, because if somebody is, if there's somebody in the in the in the NSA or the Office of National Security or something like that, that there, are proofreading his tweets, they, there has to be somebody that's sitting there going, "Do you really Imagine think it's a good idea to slip send through?" It? Imagine yeah. the shit that they're like, "You yeah. can't." Yeah, because he, I mean, he's, you know, in, in the past, we're seeing the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, like he had right. he had arsenal of tweets before that, and they kept telling him no. Yeah. So it boiled down it's to like, fuck Rosie O'Donnell. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Just... How bad? How bad would, did it start out yeah, well, as whenever it whenever the tweeting, ending result was like fuck Rosie treat, O'Donnell? He's like tweeting launch codes and shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but like, but but like uh, he's tweeting right now. I saw a thing where he's in talks with with uh, Kim Jong Un. Over I think in, they they in, they in North Korea and stuff like that that he's tweeting about that summit and everything, and I mean, I don't know. Does he? It's like we shouldn't. Does he fucking trash tell- talk that motherfucker? Is he is he like Kim Jong Un at the dumb motherfucker? Well, it's like he's telling us shit. We're not supposed. I know, to know like, man. Yeah. Like, don't be, that's like a state secret or some shit. You yeah, know? like you're not supposed to. Yeah. That's dude. What are you doing? You can't just tell everybody that. Right. In, in the, he has like it's like he has his location on, so everybody <laughs> like everybody yeah. can just find him. Yeah, well that that was the thing. I, I was I was talking about that Obama with the BlackBerry. Well, uh, yeah, Obama. They had to give him a BlackBerry, and they had to like take the physically unsolder the chip from the board inside of his BlackBerry to where there's no way that they could do location services on his phone because you know being able to to pinpoint the location of the president. Is oh, dude, imagine really being the thing. guy. Imagine being one of Trump's bodyguards. Yeah, like it's your job, dude. Oh. You you work at the White House, like you're part of like the Secret Service. Yeah, like you used to protect Obama. Uh huh. And now you're now, now you're, you're protecting Trump, Trump dude. Like, oh my god, <laughs> what have I done with my Him life? And his fucking kids. Yeah. Oh, it's fucking. And his wife crazy. that doesn't speak. She doesn't even like when he touches her. Right. She's I like, know. bitch, get off me. What yeah. the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I just go grab someone by the pussy, yeah. motherfucker. Right. Um. Yeah, I I often I often think that that like uh, uh like uh, um Ivana Trump and Ivanka you know Trump the, the and, bottom bro and, and yeah and uh who was it Marla Maples he went to an um, island dude and bought him. yeah and I just I just see those chicks just just sitting back just laughing going oh my god I'm so glad I'm not involved in this circus anymore dude just imagine like. Just imagine being them. Yeah. Like, like, like we're like, bas- like the way I look at it is, she's fucking, she's a victim, bro. Right. She's been kidnapped, and he yeah. just puts her on TV. She's, I know. Like, it's like it's like we're he's watching hostage we're or watching a hostage situation yeah, play the fuck out with our presidency, dude. Yeah. That's what it feels like. She doesn't want. It. There was that one where he's like, Ivanka really wishes she could be here. She was standing right fucking when next to him. He didn't even recognize her because she wasn't in a like. Two thousand, yeah. five thousand dollar dress. She was right. like in a tracksuit. Yeah. She was like, I don't know who this bitch is. I don't know who this bitch is. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, that's my wife. <laughs> oh crap. Yeah, dude. It's that's fucking so fucking weird. I I mean, it's just it's one of those kind of things that I just expect sometime to wake up 
you know, someday <laughs> just they're gonna be like, you've been just, in a coma for the whole years. thing. Yeah, or the whole thing is just gone off the fucking rails, and like Donald Trump is out on the on the fucking south lawn of the White House in his underwear, running around, just oh, you know, really. I, I'm ready. I, well, uh, oh, no one knows slip and slides the way I know slip and, and slides. slides. Yeah, like, absolutely. <laughs> and some but, fucking I mean, make America and, great and it, again swim trunks. And, it, and it's one of those kind of things <laughs> where where it's like, uh, um, you know, 20 years ago, could you have believed that this, sh- you know, if somebody told you this was going to come to pass, would you have believed it? Same same thing is like. Oh, uh, fuck is like, no. You'd ask in, me four or five years ago. I said well, no way. Well, it's like, like in, in Back to the Future, in, in the movie Back to the Future, you know, it's set, he goes back to like 1953 or, or whatever like that. Yeah. And he tells, uh, he tells, you know, the, the professor, the, um, that, that, Ronald Reagan is the president, and he's like, he's like, oh no, an actor can't be. Pre- You're talking about Ronald Reagan, the actor. He wouldn't be president. But I mean, it's one of those kind of things where where that kind of makes sense. That joke kind of makes sense. But then Ronald Reagan, he was like, he like went into politics. He was the governor of California first. I felt like he did you all had that. To, I thought I remember learning you were supposed to be. You're supposed to hold some kind of fucking office before yeah, being president. Right. That, that's that that that's the thing that that. Yeah, I mean, and I was thinking about, I was thinking about like the old presidencies from, from like you know the 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 first sixteen presidents or, or something like that. That some of them didn't hold, some of them didn't hold office, um, but not very many of them. I mean, some of them, you know, most of them were were either mayors or governors or or, or you know um, senators or, or congressmen or or something like that before they became the president of the United States. But in this case, you know, Donald Trump, he has zero political yeah. experience before this. How did, how did he like, you know what, whenever, when he started fucking running, every, like the whole country should have stood back and go, so this is not, you're telling us this is a whole, this is a sham. Right. Yeah. This isn't a real job. Are you, yeah. You're fucking kidding me. Yeah, like, I know. Like, they should have known right then and there. This, the, the, it wasn't right. When, when it, he won, uh-huh. Even no matter no matter how many like giggle votes he got, like uh-huh. I'm gonna vote for Trump. Yeah, I'm gonna vote for Dude, Trump. This when he won, point. everyone should have stepped the fuck back and been like, <laughs> like no. that that. Th- I'm pretty sure yeah. that's how like America was founded with a right. situation like that. They're like, wait the fuck, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, not no, not cool. Not not cool. Not not that guy. You've been lying to us. We thought but, this guy actually had power. Yeah, <laughs> like, but but we were talking about. We were talking about earlier that that you know the the fact that this last election, it was like it was like everybody was voting for someone. They were voting against another candidate because you know I don't want I don't want Hillary. Well, that there's some people Trump who are either. glued, bro. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the fucking yeah, nominee like, is. I'm voting Republican. Right, I, don't give a I know. Fuck who they're is. like straight down the line. They'll they'll like vote. I don't get. I'm not even gonna listen to a word he says. Yeah, they're I'm going to the vote voting bo- booth and just vote. The complete Republican ticket, ticket, or the complete Democrat ticket, or yeah. something like that. You know. Yeah, they, they don't, they don't even read the options. There's some people who just hate. Like, there's people who hate the fucking other. Like, if I was Republican and you were Democrat, there's people who are just like, you're a Democrat. Like, you, mm. could, you could be like, let's say that's real. Like, I'm a Republican, yeah. you're a Democrat. Right. We're talking for an hour. We're having a right. good time, and then you go, I'm a Democrat. Right. I'm like, I'm like. People I would, walk people, the fuck away. People would They'll get like, get physically get mad. Like, yeah. I mean, you're a fucking. For real? So you think? What? You, mm. So it's just cool to kill fucking bait? And yeah, like, yeah. All right. over, just but like until he knew that little inside piece of information, they were cool uh-huh. as fuck. They had right. No, I know, but in, just talking football and hockey. Yeah, and then that 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 goes back to the thing that we were talking about before that that if if somebody finds out you're a Republican or a Democrat, they, they and you're the opposition party of what they are. They're just like, oh, well, you believe, you know, that babies should die and you believe that, that, you know, and all this government. But that's what I was talking about, that that I don't really know what I am because there's there's certain issues that, that people would identify me as a, a right winger and certain issues that people would see me as a leftist. Or something. They got to make a new party. And, and, yeah, there's, there's got to be, be something. Party. There's got to be the hey, <clears> let's <throat> just kind of let's just kind of sit like down and talk about this shit, you know? Yeah. Because I'll do that. I'll sit down and I'll you know anybody that has any kind of opinion and everything. I'll sit there and I'll have a I'll have an open dialogue with you. Do you think we're I'll, ever gonna have a normal president again? I don't know. Not not after I don't know after this. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, it's got to be somebody. I think we go old school, out bro. The... I think we go straight back to old white man who held office yeah. for twenty years. Yeah. I bet you that's exactly what the fuck happens. Probably. Or we'll go completely different. Like get Obama back. Get like just. Do, <laughs> we'll just do something crazy. Yeah, something. But we'll just yeah, make it a reality after, show. Yeah. After this one, <clears throat> after this one, I mean, you know, I I don't. <sighs> I don't know who they could get. I I the all thought, state dude. Are you in good hands? That good guy. Hands? Yeah, yeah, get that. Get him. I I really <laughs> thought that in this last election that there should have been a candidate that had a military or or at least war experience or something because there's something that comes from that 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 I feel like that maybe this country is in such a kind of a place where someone who has the the experience of being a a, a leader like a shot in, caller in, yeah, of the military something like that you know so you know I I don't know if you you've studied your presidential history but like like a like an Eisenhower or um you know even even uh, John F Kennedy who was in the navy or um you know there there there's something I think about who- presidential people that have been in really in the military like like wartime yeah. military that that gives them a certain perspective that they can that that they don't go hard line on okay well this is the way it is and you know fuck all the you know, they they wouldn't be like fuck the snowflakes they they would take in you know their opinion and 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 and, and just be able to to do it in a in a manner that 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 befits, uh, you know, sort sort of making, not really making everybody happy, but doing the doing what's best for the for for the country and for for what you know so, for you know trade who, relations and shit. Who's the first president you remember? Like the first president I remember? Because like I I just that's what I was just googling. Like whenever I guess uh, George Bush. Senior right. was president when I was born, uh-huh. but I don't remember. Like, I don't remember anything like that. Like okay. I, I, I really remember the first like. I the, I kind of I remember Bill Clinton because of the scandal, and then I really right. remember the first election. I really remember was whenever George W. Bush got right. elected. The first the first president that I remember, and being on TV and stuff like that, and seeing the president on TV and seeing stuff like that was Richard Nixon. Okay, because whenever <laughs> I was I was born whenever. Whenever, uh, whenever Lyndon Baines Johnson was president, okay, um, and of course, uh, uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson was succeeded by by Richard Nixon. So I remember, you know, being being a little kid, and you know, <laughs> back 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 in back in those days, you know, it didn't matter if you were you know fucking watching wrestling or watching Batman at night or something like that. If the president came on, that's all that there was on on TV. Really, so you're like, damn it. Yeah, and you're watching you Batman. Know, you're it's like, like this old like motherfucker. You're watching, yeah, you're like watching Batman. It's like right in the middle of a cool episode. I don't and know. And then the fucking president comes on. I don't know a lot about Richard Nixon, man. Okay, well, I mean, he he was, you know, he I was, was the terrible president. in school. I know. Well, I mean, I I I, I couldn't really give you much of his. You know, I, was he really was he a good president or a bad president? That's pretty. Uh, I mean, it, like, it depends on it depends on who you ask. That's, but I guess that's with everybody. I, Some I people think, think Trump is great. Yeah, <laughs> I would think, as an independent, as let's call ourselves independent. Let's, let's call, call let's, let's just call, call let's call ourselves fucking like reasonable thinkers. Reasonable thinkers. All right, as reasonable thinkers, I think that Richard Nixon was not a good president because he tried to force himself into being able to get reelected and that's what Watergate came from. You've always heard of Watergate. Yeah. And that's what the, the thing was is is uh uh Richard Nixon, who was a Republican, um had some of his boys uh break into the to get information uh into the uh Democratic National Committee convention uh which was held in New York and it was the place they were breaking into was a place called the Watergate Hotel. And that that's where that comes from. But anyway, he sort of tried to 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 get, you know, uh dirt on I can't remember who was running against him, but he was uh uh trying to get dirt on him and everything and his boys got caught and you know, Nixon said, Oh, I didn't do anything but then it ended up where, you know, people he found out that he did, did stuff. And 
Here's another thing. Here's another thing. Uh, the thing about Richard Nixon was the first president that started the uh, the social war on drugs. Okay. He demonized. Yeah. He demonized marijuana because he wanted to. He, didn't want to. he wanted to get a hold because at the time there was, uh, you know, there there was, uh, you know, it was it was the very, you know, the the end of the seventies of, of of civil rights. It was past the sixties of of the stuff that you see with the faros. It was stuff yeah. that they were trying to do civil rights in, in, you know, try to put it into action and everything and. But there were still militant parties like the Black Panthers and stuff like that that, that, that that were around and everything. And then there was also there was also the issue that we were still in Vietnam, um, and that was costing a lot of money and a lot of people were dying and nobody really knew why we were over there. But he really, really demonized uh, drugs, especially marijuana. Um, he bumped up a lot of the laws on it to where to where you know it, it made it to where if cops you know, one day, one one day, somebody would be sitting smoking weed in in the park with their girlfriend or something like that, and the cops would come by and say, "Oh, you fucking hippies! You know, get get out of here!" And they'd stomp on their weed or something like that, that made the 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 uh, punishment for having you know, like that much that much right there. That's that's that that that. I mean, he was making it to where that was a, you know. Class A felony to where you'd spend for for that much right there you would you'd spend twenty years in prison, you know no no doubt yeah. no doubt no no parole no nothing or something like that but he tried to demonize it, and you know of course to this day we're still you know fifty years later we're still trying trying to work to through come back from that come back from that yeah that's know, crazy you know? dude it's just like a little like twenty sack you just mm. go to jail that's fucking nuts man. Oh, yeah. That is crazy. Absolutely. So uh, they, that's that's another thing, man. Like getting to see this, like the, it's like we're going through. We get to see our own prohibition. Like cause I was born in the '90s, dude. I didn't right. see like I didn't see anything. I haven't seen mm-hmm. anything, man. You know, like it's the only thing I've seen is this crazy ass. That's the cra- This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. 2017 mm-hmm. and 18. Right. Are it mm-hmm. almost doesn't feel real. Yeah. It almost feels mm-hmm. like you said, like like I'm in a coma. Like um, I'm gonna yeah. wake up. It's like any you're gonna moment. wake up and I'm like, oh, well, okay, I was. I was dreaming about some kind of alternate. What if you wake up and it's worse? Yeah, They're no. like, dude, no, no. The reason you were thinking Trump was president is because we uh-huh. kept saying that, yeah, he was president. But that right. was that was 15 years ago. Uh, mm-hmm. They're like Jay Z's president now. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, true. Um, you know, I mean, they, they, Macy Gray, she's president. Macy Gray is president. <laughs> <laughs> Macy Gray for president. Let's get a, yeah. let's get a T-shirt, let's, man. Yeah, let's get that started. I'll, I'll I'll spread that around. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you good? I'm good. All I'm right, good. got about an hour and a half on that one. All right, good. Uh, cool, cool. Well, thanks for coming over. Sorry oh, you had to come over twice. Oh, yeah, it's it's cool. I always I've, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, man. I we'll really... have to do it again. This was hella fun. Oh yeah, I didn't was. even realize it'd been an hour and a half. Yeah, so I'll think about some other shit to talk about. Some weird shit. Yeah, let's do it, man. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Weekly Relapse. Sorry I didn't play a song this episode. I played one on part one. But I also didn't say bye on the last one. So I just want to thank you guys. Thank you for all the support. If you guys want to like Yellow City Comedy and Productions on Facebook, please do so. Follow me on Instagram, all that jazz. And then don't forget we got the free comedy show coming up at Leftwoods on the 21st. And then we have uh, at Zombie Bar on the 24th we're going to do a benefit show. So come out and help, help us raise some money for this wonderful family. That's it, man. You got any plugs? You want to plug anything? Uh, well, I just uh, I wanted to uh, um, the uh, bastard sons of David Hasselhoff will be at Leftwoods. I got on, a picture of him right here. Yep, on uh, on uh, Friday, and uh, that's that's gonna be a really really good show. Dude, if I have a little extra yeah. cash in my pocket, I'll yeah. be there. I'm bringing out my. Uh, I mean, I've I've already made sort of a deal with the guys. I'm bringing out my multi track recorder, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a live set. I'm I'm gonna do. So, sort of a live EP, record a live EP for them. Oh, that sounds awesome! So, so, so yeah. yeah, you guys show up. Yeah, you gotta get, show up. You can be in. The, you can hear you hear you on the CD. You know, being in the audience, going woo and laughing because these yeah. dudes are fucking hilarious. Oh yeah, these guys are fucking hilarious. If you guys have never seen the Bastard Sons, it's definitely definitely worth going. John Perkins, mm-hmm. yeah, all those yeah. guys are awesome. Dude. All of them are awesome. Oh, yeah, they're yeah, all Civic. fucking awesome. All right, man. Thanks for coming on, buddy. This has been the Weekly Relapse. I'm Skyler. I'm Matt. 
Go ahead and tell him your last name one more time. Matt Gilliland. But everybody calls me Maddie. Maddie. Yeah. Peace.